Hello and welcome to week five of e-learning. This assignment is going to be in your OneNote binder underneath the Fusion tab and it's going to be a two-part assignment. It's going to be a total of 30 points and it's going to be due by this upcoming Friday by 3 p.m. This first portion you're going to want to use the internet to answer these five general questions because I want you to know what PPE is, what the general definition is, who uses it, um, how the medical industry is using it, and then providing a picture example of which one you think is the most important to protect people during this COVID uh, pandemic. So I thought that this would be a good way to take what you've been learning and put a positive spin on how you could possibly help to um, you know, protect us from this COVID uh, situation that we're in. So answer those five questions first, each one of those is two points, and then what we're going to do now is move into the model drawing portion, which is what this video is mainly going to focus on. So this is an example of the model that you're going to make. Now you're probably wondering, what is that thing? How is it used for COVID? Um, I've called this thing the ear saver, and why do I call it the ear saver? Well, because Many of our medical professionals and first responders are wearing masks for 12 hours a day. Now, if you take a look at that elastic band, that can create some major chafing and some much discomfort on the back of the ears from rubbing and pulling right there. So what we're creating is what we're calling the ear saver. And what it does is the straps, the elastic straps can wrap around depending on the size of your head. So there's different tabs there, so you can make it tighter or looser. So that way it relieves the back of the ears if you're wearing those masks for a long period of time. Now I do want to throw out a quick disclaimer. I did not create this design. Um, it was created by someone else online that I found a model of. But the problem was, you know, what do you do if you get a model that you can download online and just 3D print, but you want to edit it? Those models are typically STL files. And if you remember what I taught you in class, an STL file is when it takes your model that you made and slices it in layers for the 3D printer. But the problem is you can't edit that model. So I'm going to show you how to take maybe a 3D printed object, take a picture of it, and then create your base model so you can edit it and change it and re-engineer it to maybe some of your specifications. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, obviously, I'm going to put the link for this video right here. There is going to be a reference picture that we're going to reference. This link is going to take you to your OneDrive to download a picture. And I'm going to explain that in the video right now. But just uh, another quick disclaimer, make sure when you do this that you're logged in to your JTHS, JTHS account because only people in our district can access this picture. Finally, down here on the bottom, you're going to insert a picture of your drawing when you're all done. Now, I also want to be clear on this. The drawing must be a clear picture, so you're going to screen clip at the end. Windows Shift S is the keyboard shortcut. And it must include your name in the title block. Some people have been pretty smart, and they're screen clipping from my videos. I need to see your work. So make sure that your name is in the title block. It's a nice crystal clear picture so I can give you your full 30 points. So let's go ahead and jump into this. What I would like you to do is go ahead and open up Fusion 360. And we're going to um, expand the data panel up here on the top left corner. And we're going to do a new project. And we're going to name that project COVID-PPE and then click enter. Now I'm going to add a number two on mine because I already have one for a folder that I was practicing with, but call it COVID-PPE. And then once you add that and hit enter on the keyboard, what we're going to want to do is pin that to the top. So if you find that folder or project that you just made, click the little green pin and then it'll always be located up top here. I'm going to unpin that other one up at the top of your list for the current project you want to be working in. Excuse me. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and bring in the picture that we want to reference. Now, to do that, you're going to go here, you're going to scroll down, and you're going to click this link. 
when you click that link it's going to open up the web and it's probably going to ask you to log in in your OneDrive and then you can go ahead and type in your username and password and it should pop up with a picture that looks like this so this is the model that I already went and 3D printed and I'm using a dial caliper to create a reference dimension that we're going to use here in a minute. What I would like you to do is click on download. Okay, so you're going to click download. What that's going to do is it's going to save it into your download folder. So I'm going to minimize that, go back to Fusion. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my data panel here. I have a new project that I've started and I want to go ahead and I need to first let's save this thing let's get it saved so I'm gonna hit save now we need to make sure that the location is correct you need to make sure that this is the name of the folder if it's not you need to go over here and find the project that you're trying to work in so mine was PP2 because I'm starting a new one and then what we're gonna do is name this Again, yours will just say COVID PPE. I added it too because I have a second one. The name, we can call it Ear Saver. And then I'm going to hit save. So now I've saved this model into that project folder that I just made. Now we need to bring in our picture. So to bring in our picture, we're going to go ahead and do an import, I believe. We're going to go insert canvas uh, oh and I forgot something one second and actually I got to step ahead of myself I'm gonna hit cancel let's expand that data panel again I need to get that picture into this folder right here so double click into your COVID PPE folder so I'm gonna double click into that all right notice that right now we see the file that we're currently working on in there but we want to upload that picture that we just grabbed that Mr. West shared with us. So I'm going to click Upload. I'm going to go to Select Files. Now this should be in your Downloads. And it's probably alphabetical order. You're looking for Ear Saver. Where is my Ear Saver picture? And there it is right there. Ear Saver image. I'm going to hit Open. And then I'm going to click Upload. So now that file, that picture is now being uploaded right into my Fusion 360 folder. So now you'll see we got our part file that we're working on, and we're going to have that reference image that we want. I'm going to go ahead and click Close. So now that is in our folder, so I can go ahead and close my data panel. And I'm going to go back up to Insert again and go to Canvas. Now once I'm in the Canvas, I'm going to make sure I'm in the correct folder. So I'm in that COVID PPE folder, and I'm going to click on the Ear Saver image and hit Insert. Now the first thing that it wants to know is which plane do you want to insert the image on. Now if you remember what that picture looked like, it was a top view. So I'm going to click on this top plane right here. All right, and then you'll see the picture come in. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. And actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to zoom in. Oh, yeah, I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, just roll my mouse wheel forward. I'm going to pan over, and I'm going to check some settings on the canvas. So right now, um, it's opacity, so it's see-through. It's at 50%. We're good on that. We want display through. We want that checked, so make sure that that is checked. And what else do we want? We're going to leave all of this the way it is. I'm going to click OK. All right, so the problem is that picture is in there, but it's not to scale. If we took a measurement right now of this portion of the picture of the dial caliper, that is not two inches. So we need to calibrate that picture to do that. So to do that, we're going to expand our canvases in the browser over here. And here's our iSaver image. Watch, if I turn that on, turn it off, that's the image. So I'm going to right click on that and go to calibrate. If you remember, you learned about this when we did the um, online course earlier with Autodesk Design Academy. You learned how to do this. I believe it was with the um, with that saw. Yeah, it was with the saw. So I'm going to go to Calibrate. And I need to go to the top 
view though. So I'm going to click on the top view of the view cube and that's sideways. So I'm going to rotate it with this little arrow here. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. I'm going to go, you know, right around the edge, the inner edge of the dial caliper. Somewhere close. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to click there. And then I'm going to zoom out. And now I'm going to go straight over to the other side and click on the inside edge over here. So you notice that that now gives us a dimension. If you look, right now it says 0.18. So this picture is way too small. So I'm going to type in 2 and I'm going to hit enter. What that did was it just scaled that picture up and calibrated it to get this as close to 2 inches as possible. So now we can use this model as a reference as we go to create our 3D model of the year saver. And let's go ahead and do a quick version save. So I'm going to click on save. For the name of this version, I'm going to put calibrated picture. And I'm going to say OK. All right. So that was our incremental save. So now we can actually go ahead and get into some modeling. Now, I'm going to just tell you, we're going to start with, if you see this shape right here, the main kind of body of the ear saver, we're going to start with that. Um, we're not going to draw these tabs just yet. We're going to start with the outer body. We're going to model that. Then we're going to cut the hole out. Then we're going to draw one of the tabs, rectangular pattern it, and then mirror it to the other side, and then finish up with some fillets. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with the outer perimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create 2D Sketch. And if I hit the Home button, we're going to create a 2D sketch on this top plane. So I'm going to click on that. It'll reorientate my screen. Now, I know we always want to start off at 0, 0, but the problem with that right now is that 0, 0 is technically not the middle of my object. It's the middle of the picture, but this object is not centered in the picture, so I'm not going to use my origin to start off. I know I've always told you to start there, but for this reference picture, um, we're not going to be able to. What I'm going to do is kind of reference the middle of the model or the, the picture here. And what we're going to do is draw half of this outer body. So I'm going to start with my line tool. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on the Y axis. I'm going to make sure of that. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I want to stress that right now. You're just trying to get as close as possible. So I'm zooming in right around the top of the model there and I'm gonna click okay I'm gonna go straight over now again I'm just going to about where see this filleted edge I'm trying to make sure I draw a straight line so make sure that that thing is um, perpendicular so make sure it's you know straight 180 degrees and I'm going over to about right there again don't pay attention to my numbers yours might be different than mine so I'm going to left click, that draws my line. Now I'm going to go straight down. Again, making sure that that's perpendicular, you see the 90 degrees. Now I want to come down to about right where, you know, this line's coming into play. So I'm going to left click that. Okay, doing good so far. Notice the perpendicular symbol. Notice the horizontal constraint symbol. Those are very important. You should see those. If you don't, then delete your lines and restart. Now, this is where it's going to get a little different. We're not going to stop here. We're going to go all the way out to here. Okay, and I'm trying to pay attention to make sure I'm kind of aligning with this edge. And I'm going to also try and end it right where this part ends. So about right there again. Don't worry about numbers. Just try and use the picture as a reference. So I'm going to left click. Perfect. I'm going to come straight down. Now, how far down do I go? Well, I'm trying to kind of eye up this line where it's coming into play. And I'm going to go about right here-ish. And I'm going to go straight over again. Um, now, I'm going to go, you know, somewhere in the middle of this fillet. doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to go about, I don't know, right there. And I'm going to come down on an angle. Now, again, I'm just referencing this edge. All right. So about, I'd say, right there-ish. Again, 
not looking for perfect. It might be a little off. That's okay. Um, and then now this part's important. When I come over, I'm going to want to make sure I'm referencing that point and it's going to be aligned with it. So I'm on the Y axis. Okay, and I'm just trying to um, reference that right there. And then I, and then what I'm going to do finally is close this off and click there. Now this middle line, I don't want it to be a regular line. I actually want it to be a construction line because we're going to use that as a mirror later. Um, so if, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to turn on construction over here. Notice it became dashed. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that so that way I'm no longer drawing construction lines. Now we had a horizontal constraint and some perpendiculars. We need to make our way through here and we need to also add some more um, constraints. Uh, I think the first one I'm going to do is a perpendicular constraint between these two lines because I want to make sure that that's 90 degrees. So I'm going to go perpendicular and I'm going to click here and here. I'm going to do the same thing here and here. And I believe, oh, and I want this line parallel to this line. So I added those perpendiculars. So now I'm going to go parallel. I'm going to click this line and I'm going to click that line. Um, and actually, you know what? I got an error message. I didn't, they're actually already perpendicular because of the, I'm sorry, they're already parallel because of the perpendicular constraints. Duh, Mr. West. All right, um, what else do we got? I also want to make sure that this is perpendicular with my construction line, so I'm going to go perpendicular here to here. And, oh, I didn't need to do that because that's parallel with that. I got an error message. All right, that's okay if you got the error message. I just want to make sure that those constraints are in. So I think that that is good for that part of it. So now I'm ready to go ahead and mirror. So when I mirror, I just want to grab these blue lines. I don't want to grab this middle line. So how you make your selection is important. If I start the box over here, notice how it's a solid line, right? But if I do that, it's not going to get these lines. So what I want to do is use an intersecting selecting box. So if I start down in the bottom right, left click and drag, notice the outer perimeter of the box is now dashed. That means that anything that is touching that box or in the box is going to get selected. So two different ways of selecting. you got a bounding box versus an intersecting box. So different ways of selecting things is important. So notice I grabbed all of those lines except for the construction line. And now I'm going to use mirror. So I'm going to click on mirror. I'm going to pan over a little bit. So it has 13 selected objects. Now what's our mirror line? So I'm going to click on mirror line click on this center construction line that we just dropped in. Notice it gives us a preview. Don't worry that this doesn't look like the picture. That's okay. Um, it's because that picture is not square. So I'm going to say okay. And now I have a mirrored object. So we have a closed shape. Notice when I hover over it, it's solid. That means that I can extrude it, right? If it's not, then that means that it's not closed. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and extrude it. So I'm going to hit finish sketch to stop that. I'm going to hit the home button on the view cube and I'm going to go ahead and extrude and we're going to go up. How far? We're going to go 0.05. I'm going to say enter on the keyboard and now we're good to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do an incremental save. This one we could just call it um, body or main body is fine. So we're doing our version saving there. Okay, now we need to cut out the hole in the middle. So I'm going to do another 2D sketch. Um, and this time I'm going to click on, well, let me click, yeah, I'm going to click on this top face of the object. It's kind of a little deceiving because of the, the transparency, but I'm going to left click the top of that. All right, and now we're just going to create a rough um, cutout. But I want to make sure that this cutout centered. So I'm going to draw a line. I click the line tool. I'm going to go to construction. And I want to reference the middle of that existing geometry. So do you see that X with the triangle? That means midpoint. So I'm going to left click there. And I'm going to come straight down 
um, to about where the top of that cutout starts, or where, yeah, where it's at. So I'm going to left click there. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that, and I'm going to turn off construction. I don't want to draw any more construction lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and click the line tool again, click that end point of that construction line, and I'm just going to rough this in. Make sure, though, that you're drawing straight lines. Don't go on an angle. Draw a straight line roughly out about here. I'm going to come down to about the bottom here. I'm going to go straight across 90 degrees. And again, notice see how it snapped to that existing point because I want it to line up with this one up here. So you see that blue line right there. So I have a perfectly straight horizontal line and I'm referencing the other part. So I'm going to click there, hit escape to get out of the line tool. And we're going to mirror this. So I'm going to draw a construction line down the middle again. So line tool, turn on construction, left click there, left click there. Hit escape, turn off construction, and let's mirror this. So I'm going to use that um, intersecting box selection method I showed you before. So right to left, dragging up. Um, and actually, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. I just want to grab this. So I'm going to use a bounding box. I lied. I want to use a bounding box. So left to right, dragging down, grabbing those lines right there. See the ones that are highlighted blue? Now I'm going to use the mirror tool. Nine selected. Okay. I'm going to click select mirror line over here on the right-hand side. What is my mirror line? I'm going to click right here in the middle. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to click this little line right here. That's my mirror line right there. So I left click that line. Notice the preview. Say OK. And we are looking good. Again, I know it doesn't match up with the background image. Don't worry about that right now. I'm going to say finish sketch. I'm going to hit the home button. And now I'm going to extrude cut this out. So extrude. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to drag it down and notice cut automatically happened for distance. I can just say distance is all so it'll cut all of the object and say OK. So now we're looking good. If I hit the home button, I'm going to just turn off the canvas for a second just to take a peek at this. That's looking pretty good so far. I'm happy with that. Looks symmetrical. Good. All right, so I'm going to hit the home button again. Let's turn that canvas back on. Let's do an incremental save, and let's call this um, uh, body cutout. So we got our version saved there along the way. And now we can go ahead and start doing the tabs. This is where it can get a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Um, we're going to do a new sketch, and this sketch, though... We're going to click on the bottom plane here. So zoom in. Make sure you get this bottom plane. That's technically the bottom of the object. So I'm going to click that bottom plane. All right. And now we're going to start with this one over here. So I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to start with a circle. So I'm going to go circle tool. I'm going to eye up roughly where the middle of this tab is at. And... It looks to be around 0.25, so I'm going to go 0.25 for my diameter. But I'm not too happy with the position. Eh, yeah, if I want to move it, you can just click and drag it. So if you want to try and eye it up, kind of get it where you want it. Um, what I'm trying to do is kind of make sure that this edge is lined up, because I'm going to have it come straight down. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm going to get it roughly right about there. I'm not worried about this right now. Okay, so I got my circle drawn. Now let's connect this circle to our existing body. So I'm going to go line tool. I'm going to draw a line from this endpoint straight up um, to the circle. Now, the circle, we definitely want tangent. So if you look very closely, there's a circle with a line on the top of it. See that tangent symbol? That will create a tangent constraint. If I didn't do that and I just clicked the X like that, that's fine, but now I need to add the tangent constraint. So I hit escape to get out of the line tool. I'm going to go tangent constraint. I'm going to click the line. I'm going to click the circle. Notice the tangent constraint is there. 
The other thing I want to make sure of is that this line is perfectly aligned with this one. And that constraint is called collinear. See how those, the red line is aligned with the black line there? So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click this line. And then I'm going to click this line. So now those are perfectly aligned with one another. That's looking good. All right, now we need to connect from here to here, but there's an arc there. So we're going to go back to circle. I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to just draw a circle until I hit the tangent of that circle. Right? So I just drew a circle anywhere right there in that space. And just make sure you're clicking tangent to there. See the tangent constraint after I clicked it? So that's good, but the problem is that the circle is not tangent to this line. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the circle tool. And I'm going to go tangent again. And I'm going to click this circle and then this line. Notice that the circle is now tangent with this circle and tangent with this line. That is looking spectacular. Now we got to do some trimming. So I'm going to go trim. I'm going to trim out this part of this big circle. And I'm going to trim out this part of the little circle. That looks great. Now, I don't feel like doing all of that all over again, so let's use the mirror tool. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the trim tool. I'm going to draw a line, but I specifically want it to be construction. So I'm going to turn on construction, and I want it to be from the midpoint of this edge right here. So did you see that triangle? Triangle means midpoint, so I'm going to left click. I'm just going to draw a line. Don't worry about the angle right now. Just draw a line any distance out and click. Hit escape. Now, since we're mirroring, this line that we just drew needs to be parallel with this edge. So I'm going to go parallel. I'm going to click this line that I just drew with this edge right here. So now I can mirror across this line. I'm going to hit escape to get out of my parallel constraint. I'm going to drag a bounding box. So anything that's in the box around that sketch up there. Notice how only that is selected. And I'm going to use mirror. I'm going to click on mirror. Okay, I got 11 objects selected. And I'm going to go ahead and click on select mirror line right here. So what's my mirror line? That construction line we just drew right here. Click that. Notice the preview. Oh, that looks good. That's aligning right there. Yeah. All right. There we go. I'm going to say OK. And we are almost good to go. What we need to do now is just connect from there to there. Now my construction is still turned on, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to click on the line tool and I'm going to click here and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click on the other endpoint of that circle right there. All right, so we got one tab drawn. Let's go ahead and extrude this thing. I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to hit the home button. I'm going to zoom in and now I'm going to go to extrude. I'm going to click this portion and this portion so I get the whole tab. And then we're going to go up with it. How far up are we going? We're going to go 0.1. And everything else looks good. I don't want to do a cut, though. I want this to be a join. And actually, you know what? No, I want this to be a new body. So, and I'll explain why in a minute. We want it to be its own body. If we don't, we won't be able to create our rectangular pattern. So we want it to be its own entity. If we do a join and we go to go ahead and do a rectangular pattern, it's going to try and rectangular pattern the body of this and the tab. So by doing a new body for this tab, we'll be able to create the other three um, rectangular patterns of that. So I'm going to do a new body. That's important. I'm going to say OK. And now I have that. If I drop down the bodies, you'll notice I have body 1, which is that one, and body 2, which is the tab. Actually, you know what? Let's rename body two. Is there a rename option here? Maybe if I just double click. Oh, there we go. I'm going to call this tab. And we'll, I'm going to just click this and call this, just call this body because that's the main body. All right. So I got our bodies. I labeled it body one. That's fine. So I got body one and I got the tab. Now we need to, and actually before I do this next thing, let's do our save. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Let's call this tab. We created a tab, so we're doing our versioning. And if you missed the versioning before when we did our other course, the online course, if you expand your data panel here, if you look at the ear saver part, you'll notice it says V5. That's because we've done five different saves. And if I expand that, 
you'll see, oh, there's when we made the main body, there's when we made the cutout, there's when we made the tab. So the different versions allow you to go to sp specific parts back in your model. So let's say you messed up somewhere and you wanted to not lose your entire work. You just wanted to go to back to the cutout and restart there. You could go back and start there if you needed to. All right. Quick uh, just a, um, discussion, excuse me, discussion there on versioning. All right. Let's go ahead and rectangular pattern this thing. Um, to do that... What are we going to do here? We need to create a path for the rectangular pattern to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 2D sketch on this bottom plane. I'm going to use my line tool. So I click on line and I want it to be a construction line. Now I also want it to reference. So you see this distance from here to here. I want this to be right in the middle of that. So I'm going to snap to that midpoint and I'm going to draw a line out somewhere out here okay so I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that but the problem is that path is not the exact direction we want it to go we want it to be parallel with this edge so I'm gonna use a parallel constraint I'm gonna click my construction line and I'm gonna click this edge notice how that is now a perfect path for this tab to follow when we create the rectangular pattern I'm gonna hit escape to get out of the parallel tool and I'm going to turn off construction now I'm going to go ahead and hit finish sketch. I'm going to hit the home tab. I'm going to zoom in over here so I can see what I'm doing. And now I got to remember where rectangular pattern is. Oh, it's right here. So there's the rectangular pattern in the create ribbon or cre yeah, create ribbon or panel, I should say, the create panel. So I click on rectangular pattern. Now Make sure that the pattern type is set up for bodies, because remember, we created a new body for the tab. All right, so right now it wants you to select, well, what do you want to create a rectangular pattern? you got two different options. You can click it right here in the model, or you can click it here in the browser. I'm going to click the tab body in the browser right here. So I clicked it. The next thing, if you look at our um, dialog box over here, it wants to know the direction. So I'm going to click on the direction select option, and I'm going to click on the construction line we just drew. So now it knows the direction that we want to go. How many of them do we want? So for quantity, I'm going to change that to four. And then what I'm going to do is go to a top view. And now I'm going to just use the arrow and eye this up and drag these out till it gets really close to what I want. And I'm going to go right about there. Again, there is no specific for that. You're just trying to eye it up with the picture in the back. I'm going to say OK. And look at that. We got our four tabs on the left side. But now we need those over on the right side. Now, you're probably thinking, well, let's use the mirror tool. Let's draw a construction line down the middle. But the problem is when you're trying to mirror bodies, it doesn't recognize a construction line. Don't ask me why, but it doesn't. We need to use what they call a work plane, and we need a work plane right in the middle of our object. So how do we get a work plane there? Well, under the construct option here up top, you have a mid plane. So if you take a look at that picture, it's kind of small, but the two green edges, so they're creating a plane in the middle of those, of those two green faces. So click on mid plane, and what we're going to do is zoom in over here, and I'm going to left click on this right face of our model. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to orbit around, shift in the mouse wheel. I'm going to go over to here and click on this face. And then you'll notice it created a work plane right in the middle of our object. Okay, so I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hit the home button. And now we're going to use the mirror tool. And I need to remember where the mirror tool is. If I drop down the create panel here and I go to mirror, now I have a few options. I can click these tabs by holding shift on the keyboard or I can select them over here in the browser. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to left click, left click. Oh, and I guess you don't have to hold shift. You're just left clicking these. So left click tab, tab one, tab two, and tab three. So notice over here in our mirror panel, 
says bodies. It says that there's four selected, but it needs to know the mirror plane. So I'm going to click on select. I'm going to click on this uh, mirror or this, um, sorry, work plane that we created. And then I'm going to say OK. And now you'll notice that we now have the other four tabs on the other side. Now I don't want that a work plane there anymore. So to get rid of it, it's under your construction um, area over here in the browser. So I'm going to turn that off by clicking the I. So that's all gone. And the last thing, um, and you know what? Let's go ahead and do a um, version save. So I'm going to click that. And I'm going to call that um, mirrored tabs and say OK. So now we're good on our saves. Um, let's do some fillets now because we don't want any of this poking into anybody's head. That's not going to feel good um, if that's wrapped around your head and this little corner is digging in the back of your head. You know, we're trying to eliminate discomfort and stop um, people from running into that when they're using their mask. So let's go ahead and add some fillets. So what I'm going to do is just start with this main portion right here. So I'm going to go fill it, and I'm going to first start off with these outer edges. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to orbit, and I'm going to click there. Okay, so those two are selected, but I want to do the same thing here. So I'm going to orbit down, and I'm going to go right there and right there. So that's four selected so far. I'm going to orbit over to this side. I'm going to get this one and this one, so that's six. I'm going to orbit to over here, and I'm going to go here and here. So again, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outer corners right there. And then while we're at it, let's do these inside edges to kind of smooth this out right here. Right here. I'm going to get the other two. I'm using shift in the mouse wheel to orbit and right there so I got all of those selected if you notice right here it says 12 edges um, but now we need a size of those fillets so let's go ahead and let's try uh, I'm gonna try point zero three first I'm, I'm not gonna hit enter don't hit enter yet it's still kind of small let's try point zero five let's see what that looks like that looks a lot smoother. So I'm going to go 0 0.05 for the radius of those fillets, and I'm going to say OK. And I think we're doing pretty good now. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the canvas. All right. And it looks like I still have some sketches that are visible that I don't want to see. See those hidden lines? I don't want those in there anymore, so I'm going to expand my sketches. And I'm going to, and actually, you know what? Just turn off the eye for all the sketches. So now you're not left with a nice, solid model. Um, let's go ahead and do an incremental save here. Let's call it fillets. Say OK. And let's add in some materials. So since we're 3D printing, this is going to be made out of ABS plastic which I believe if we want to do materials, hold on one second. Was that under modify? Yes, modify physical material. And we're going to go ahead and change it to an ABS plastic. So you're going to click on plastic and then ABS. And now what I want you to do is when you apply this, go click and drag it up to the main ear saver right there. What that'll do is it'll apply it to all the bodies in the ear saver. Okay, if you just clicked and dragged down the model, it might only add it to just the body or just one of these tabs because they're separate. So make sure you drag it up here to the entire ear saver. Um, and then now let's go pick a color. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, my picture. I need to move this. Sorry, my picture is getting in the way. So I'm going to close that. And let's go to appearance. Now the keyboard shortcut for appearance is A on the keyboard. So I'm going to press A. And then it should pop up. What happened? Where is appearance? Oh, it's not working. So I'm going to drop down the modify panel and go to appearance right here. And I just noticed mine was accidentally collapsed. So I just had to expand it. It's very hard to see right there. 
Um, and let's pick a different color. So I'm going to click on this ABS white here. And I'm a big fan of green. That's one of my favorite colors. But you could pick whatever you want. So slide the slider to approximately color. And then you can adjust the shade of the color and the tone to your liking. So pick a color you like and then say done. Go ahead and close the appearance panel. And let's go ahead and do a save. And then let's call this materials. All right, so the last thing we got to do, whew, that was a long one, but man, um, you guys are doing great. You're staying with me. Keep saving. Um, we just need to throw this into a drawing. Now, now we're not going to do a bunch of dimensions. Um, I just want to review how to set up a drawing, and then that's actually what you're going to screen clip in for a grade. So to do a drawing, I'm going to drop down the design. I'm going to hover over drawing, and I'm going to click on from design. Now, when I do that, some things that you want to make sure of in your create drawing panel. Um, we want to make sure it's create new. It's from scratch. For the standard, you want to do ASME. So that's our English measurement system. And make sure your units are inches. And we're going to put this on an A size. Now there's two different A sizes. We're going to do the 11 by 8.5. And, and then say OK. And then it's going to go ahead and start our new drawing using this current model that we have open. And it's loading. And right away it go, goes ahead and brings in our sheet. And it actually starts with the first view. But I don't want to start with a front view technically. I'm going to switch to a top view. So now I can actually see the model. And we're going to switch to a 1 to 1 scale. So for scale, switch to 1 to 1. And that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and left click that. And then I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to go next over here in the drawing panel and go to projected. Click on projected. Now what do I want to project? I want to use this as my parent view. So I'm going to left click that. I'm going to move my mouse straight up so I can add the top view. And left click that to add it. Now it thinks you want to keep adding um, views. And actually you know what? Let's go ahead and do the isometric while we're here. So I'm going to go off to the right over here. I'm going to left click and add that. Now I'm done adding views. To tell it I'm done I need to right click and say OK. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the isometric to open up the dialog box and I want to change that to shaded right here for style. And I'm going to say close and I want to fit all this on the page so I'm going to left click the front view and I'm going to hover over this gray box left click and drag this over a little bit I'm going to left click the top view, left click and drag this gray box down a little bit. Left click the isometric, I'm going to click that gray box, left click hold and drag that to get that fit on the page. And I'm going to just move this stuff down so it's not getting too close to one another. And then um, for drawing number, let's go ahead and fill out our title block. I'm going to double click down here on the title block. I'm going to left click on this blue text right here, double click it. I'm going to type in drawing number one is fine. And then left click off of it. Say OK up here. Um, notice it automatically filled in your name, the date, the name of the pro the name of the part, the name of the project. We just need to add in our school logo. So I'm going to go up here to insert image. Now you should still have this from the last time. If you don't have a school logo, go save one off the internet and save it into your downloads and grab it and open it. And then I'm going to go ahead and now don't snap to that. You want it somewhere, you want the left corner to kind of be where you want, you know, this, the left side of the image. We'll resize it here in a second. So I'm going to left click right about there. Problem is it's way too big. So I'm going to scale this thing down for me. I don't know. Let's try 0.4. Let's see what that does. Oops, 0.4. Uh, it didn't work. Oops. Uh, I'm going to undo. I'm going to go back. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to insert. Uh, maybe I got to do picture. Insert. Yeah, image. That's good. Click the picture. Click. Where do I want to place it? Right about there looks good. Let's change the scale to 0.4. Yeah, see, that looks like a good size. I'm going to say OK. Now, if I'm not happy with the placement, just left click around the edge of it to see that it's highlighted. Click the Move tool. 
left click um, somewhere on the image and then just kind of scoot it a little bit where you want it. If you got to go up, you got to go down, you know, you can move that just by left clicking and moving a little bit to kind of get it centered. Say OK. All right. And then we need to save. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, my save button. It should automatically be going into the correct project folder. That looks good to me for the name, ear, saver, drawing. I'm going to hit save. And I am all set to go. The last thing I should do is window shift S. Make sure this is, and actually, you know what? I'm going to escape. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because Mr. West said he wants a nice, clear picture with the title block. So make sure that I can see your name in the title block. I'm going to go to my OneNote binder and I'm going to control V to paste that thing in. Um, make sure all my questions are answered so I can get my full 30 points. All right, so that is it. Um, I hope um, you can see how this is a good way to apply your skills that you're learning in class to, you know, create something positive to help people with what's going on around you. Maybe not always for something that's currently going on like COVID, but you know, whether it's for somebody with a disability or something, you know, some type of product to make someone's life better, easier, um, that type of thing. So um, I appreciate your um, focus and finishing this project with me, and I hope you have a great day.